and welcome to another episode of Full Bar. In today's episode, we are going to start talking about COPE pipeline and how we can build a CI CD pipeline using it. If you want to know more about serverless, cloud computing, or software engineer practices in general, subscribe to my channel in the red button below. I post a video every Tuesday, so let's get started. <laughs> So in the previous episode, uh, last week, I talked about infrastructure as code and what you should choose. I talked about CloudFormation, I talked about AWS SAM, CDK, and Amplify. So Code Pipeline works with anything that is CloudFormation based. So CDK, SAM for sure, and plain CloudFormation. I never tried with Amplify, but I imagine it should work. So this is the first video in a series of at least two more videos, so it will be four videos in total. And I want to talk about building CI CD pipelines using Code Pipeline and other tools from the AWS suite. I have talked about this for many times using GitLab, and I want to try a new tool. First of all, I want to make a disclaimer. I don't know if you can hear it, but my neighbor has been cutting the grass all day and I really I was postponing recording this video forever and in some point I need to do it so sorry about that I hope it's not very disturbing so now let's go to the slides and talk a little bit about the release process and why we want to do this so let's start with what is the typical release process of code usually it consists of four or more different stages in my example I will simplify it to four stages source, build, test, and production. In the source phase, we are checking in the code, and then we are going to do some code review or something like that. And I hope you do it because it's the last time you're going to see the code before it goes to production. Then in the build phase, the code will get compiled, we will run some unit tests and do some style checks and things like that. Then in the test phase is where we do the integration test. And when we do uh, other kind of tests like performance tests, security tests, UI tests, load testing, whatever you imagine it's done here. And finally we get to production and there we are going to deploy that code to the production environment and monitor that no errors have been introduced to the service. So now that we know what is the release process, I want to make each of the videos on the series focus on one of the steps. So this one we are following uh, for this one, we are talking about the whole orchestration part that is building the pipeline. In the next video, I will be talking about the building. And in the other video, I will be talking about passing parameters so we can configure um, our environments and have different deployment stages using the same kind of templates for the pipeline and also for the applications. So subscribe to this channel and put the notifications on to be notified when those videos are coming out. Code Pipeline is a service for continuous delivery native to AWS and totally managed by AWS. It allows you to model and visualize your software release process. And you can see how the process is going by looking at the dashboard at the AWS console and get information on each of the stages and how it's doing in this release process. Code Pipeline allows you to build, test, deploy, and code every time there is a new change in the code. Code Pipeline, as I said, is a managed service by AWS, but it integrates with third-party tools like Jenkins and third-party testing solutions. I recommend you to read more information in the website of Code Pipeline that I leave it there. So for example, this is a minimal pipeline. You can see that there are three stages, source, build, and deployed, and one development environment that is the deploy my development my dev the source comes from code commit that is like a aws github and the build uh, will build the code artifact and do nothing else and then deploy will use cloud formation to deploy the artifact to the cloud and then it will run some lambda with some custom actions like integration test or some testing kind of thing 
This other example is more complicated. It's a more complete pipeline with five stages. We have source, build, a deploy to testing environment, a deploy to staging environment, and finally, a deploy to production. The source, instead of coming from code commit, is coming from GitHub. And every time a new change arrives to that GitHub repo, the whole pipeline will get triggered. As before, the build stage builds the artifact, and then we have three deployed environments, testing, staging, and production. In this case, all the environments are deployed in different AWS accounts, and all of them are using CloudFormation to deploy the artifact to the right account. The testing stage has a Lambda custom action for doing some kind of testing, maybe integration test, and the staging stage integrates with a third-party service called RunScope, and you can change to integrate with others. There is many available. And also the staging stage has a manual step that somebody needs to go and approve this process or reject it before going to production. So now we learn about code pipeline and the release process. So let's go and check some code and see how we can do this. I will use an uh, example using CloudFormation because there's many ways that you can go and create a code pipeline. You can go and create it directly from the console. You can use AWS CLI. You can do it many ways. I will do it from CloudFormation. So then the pipeline can be reutilized everywhere. So I have created a Git repo. You will find the link in the description box. And there is a pipeline there, the one that I will show you. And basically, you can get that pipeline, do small changes, and start using it right away in your account. And that's the magic of infrastructure as code. That's the power of it. So I want to show you that, and I want to show you how it looks in the console when we deploy it. So now I want to show you one real code pipeline that I have built, and I will show you the code for it. As I said, I will use CloudFormation for writing this, so then you can get it from GitHub, modify it for your application, and use it wherever you want. So my pipeline has source, build, stage, and production, so four stages. We have source. The source code comes from GitHub, so whenever there is a new change in my GitHub repo, it uh, triggers the pipeline. Then it has a build stage. It's using code build. I will talk about each of these individual stages in further videos. So for now, we just look at this from an uh, abstraction perspective. We have code build that will build the SAM. This is a SAM project. We'll build and package the SAM project and also run unit tests. And then we have the stage, a stage, <laughs> that will use CloudFormation to deploy the SAM project. And also, it will run some integration tests with Lambda at the end. And if everything passed, it will go and deploy to production. But before deploying to production, I will need to have a human being coming and doing a manual approval so we can go to production. And again, it will be cloud formation deployment of whatever was built before. So how this looks in code? So. I have this file called pipeline YAML. This is a cloud formation file. It has only 400 lines, but I want to show you the important bits. We are not going through all the lines because it's quite long. The first thing, and by the way, this is available on GitHub and you can download it and you can change it to suit your needs. So the first part is the parameters. And here I will define a parameter for my code, a GitHub repo token and user. And these are parameters that are in my parameter store. So I will go into the parameter store in my AWS account. If you don't know how to do that, I will link a video on how to add parameters. Uh, but it's something pretty simple. You just add a parameter in the parameter store with the right name. And then you can put your name of your GitHub repo and your token and your user and then uh, the stage that is getting the code will know where to get it from. Then we have uh, also defined here the bucket where all the projects and the resources will be, uh, all the artifacts will be. But this one, if you grab this code, you don't need to worry. Just let it be. It will be fine. You don't need to touch it. Then we have the definition for the code build. This is also something you don't need to touch. Uh, if you are taking this, this will create a Linux container 
with a Python image that will uh, deploy this, uh, the, that it will test and build the sum. If you need more images, you can go to this link, but just leave it as it is. You don't need to touch it if you download this piece of code. And then finally, we have the pipeline. The pipeline is quite long. It's like at 100 lines, uh, 200 lines. And it, you can see here that there is the four stages, source, build, stage, and prod. And in each of these stages, you will see the different uh, actions that they are doing. So inside the source, we can see that uh, there is a third party GitHub. And then the configuration is the GitHub user, the GitHub repo, and the GitHub token. And you can also change the branch if you want to use another particular branch. If you have multi-branch, in my case, I just leave it to master. So if you're using this, you don't need to touch this because the user, the repo, and the token you're changing in the parameters. And then unless you need to change the branch. Then we have the build stage and the build stage will run that code build, the one that we defined before. And this one, you don't need to touch unless you're doing something, you're not doing the build. But if you're doing, don't touch it, it's working. It will just run code build for you as we defined it before. And then finally, we have the staging and the production. They are very similar. Inside the staging, we have uh, three actions, create change set, execute change set, and Lambda run test. The first two is a uh, first one, create the change set for cloud formation. And then the second one is basically deploying that stack into the cloud. So this one is uh, the only important thing is that if you have changed the name of the artifact that you put it right here, if not, then it will be just working fine. And the same for the execute change set, just leave it as it is. It just works. You don't need to touch it. And then in here, Lambda run test, what you need to do is to change the name of your function to the right name for your particular function that where you're running your integration test. This is a function I just deployed, some deploy into the cloud. You can have it as a, some kind of process or something, a release process, but I just push it to the cloud uh, by running some deploy and I put the name here and it's invoking the function. You can pass environmental variables. You can pass all kinds of things to this function. But this one for me is just running some integration tests. And finally, we have production. Production, the first thing that it has is an action. It also has free action. Uh, the first one is the manual approval. And basically, by writing this, you get a little box that allows you to do some manual approval. And then again, the create change set and the execute change set for the cloud formation. And it works exactly the same. And you need to have the right package. I will show you in a future video how to pass environmental variables to your uh, SAM project from here. But for now, this is the simplest way that you can build. So basically, you just get this pipeline and change a couple of little things here and there, and it will be working for you. This was the video for today. I hope you like it. If you did, give a big thumbs up. And remember, the next episode will be about code build and how we can run unit tests and all kinds of things using the build. And yeah, that's it for today. Around here, there are other videos that YouTube recommends for you. There is the latest upload, and there is also the best content for you according to the YouTube algorithm. And if you have not subscribed, there is a link in the middle for you to go directly and subscribe. And if not, if you don't want to watch anything else, I see you next week with another episode of Uber. Ciao, ciao.